They call me Talion, Ranger of the Black Gate, Undying Champion, and probably the best thing ever to happen to weakling orcs hoping for a promotion. For it is written, I am playing Shadow of Mordor. It's pretty good fun, but I kind of feel as though I'm terrible at it. I think I uh, bite off more than I can chew and just charge headlong into a, a mass of Uruks. And I, well, like I say, I'm good for the career advancement in the, uh, the Uruk army. It's pretty good fun. I do like the Nemesis system. It really does drive home your failures when a lowly, unnamed orc rises up the ranks. But anyway, um, let's answer some questions. First up, King Polo 1920 says, Is schooling really that important in this day and age? What is your opinion on this? Is education important? Yes. I mean, absolutely, yeah. I mean, sometimes it feels like your schoolwork is pointless, and it kind of is pointless, but doing something and going through the motions at least gives you a set of skills that you can then build on. The thing about learning is that you should never really stop. I'd say probably one of the most important skills you can have is, is learning how to learn yourself. But anyway, yeah, stay in school, kids. I know it sucks. And sometimes the quality of education isn't always up to snuff, and that, you know, that can be a problem. But still, it's important to go through the motions while your, your mind is still plastic. Freddie Keeley says, Hey, Stu, what Bond film was the WA2000 in? It's uh, The Living Daylights, Timothy Dalton one. I'm not going to lie, I did check that on IMFTB. Mohamed Balkis says, What's your opinion on difficulty? Like most games are simply easy, not exactly easy, I can do it, hard, I am a bottom. But some games are creative in the difficulty implementation, like the Dark Souls series, where it's based directly on what items you choose to use and how you actually play. Uh, difficulty. I like a game to be challenging, but never frustrating, which is a really difficult line to balance on. I am a believer that a game should basically mould to the player as closely as possible. The game should give as many options to the player as possible. It should never be, this is the base difficulty, if you can't do this, you suck, you can't play this game. I don't think that's a good design decision. I think, you know, you should be able to make a game as easy as possible. But you need to do that in such a way that you don't diminish the achievement of playing on a harder difficulty. I'm really not a big fan of the, you failed, do it again paradigm either. Like, being forced to play the same mission over and over again, that is a recipe for frustration. And essentially, you know, if that happens, you can get stuck. So I think continuous progression is a nice design feature. You see this in JRPGs, you know, they call it grinding. In a game like Final Fantasy or whatever, if, if you get stuck, you can just grind mobs endlessly to become stronger. And then, you know, the game becomes easier. You have to invest time to become stronger, but... The game never says, I'm sorry, that's it, you're done. You can always just go and, and hone your skills. And while grinding can sometimes be done poorly, especially if it's mandatory grinding, I do think stuff like that is alright, as long as you've got a continuous sense of progression. Like in Shadow of Mordor, yeah, you know, you can die, but you gain experience points, you don't really lose anything, because obviously you are kind of immortal. And the Yorks who defeat you, they do get pretty smug, but in theory at least, with every game loop, you should become better, and sh you should eventually be able to overcome the challenge. Yegi says, Fluid, I'm surprised you haven't said anything about your award in the Total Biscuit contest. The stakes were really quite high. I think most of the YouTubers he nominated were great, yet you still got it. Any words, especially for the influx of new subscribers? Yes. Hello. I look forward to disappointing you in 2015. That's me being glib, but I do plan to do some really good content in 2015. I'm just... At the moment, I'm frustrated, because I, I'm still working on a video and I haven't put anything out in ages. And it's, it's quite embarrassing, you know, to win a prestigious award in the middle of a dry spell. Anyway, that should be remedied soon. I am hard at work, I promise. My first video for MMXV, days away. Anyway, as far as the award, yes, of course, it's an honour. And I'm, I'm very grateful for the attention, the influx of subscribers, and, and hopefully it's a turning point for my channel, you know. A time when I can confidently put Call of Duty to bed, and stride on into an arena of bold new variety content. The Comedian says, Hey Stu, how much attention do you pay to music and sound design in games? I think these are the subtle aspects that actually affect games in a big way. 
making guns and other weapons satisfying, setting the tone and atmosphere, and making a memorable moment even more memorable thanks to an awesome background track. A lot of game music stays with me forever on my player. No doubt sound is very important in a game. I mean, you can have the, the best animation in the world, you can have the finest graphics, but if you don't have a really keen audio track on top of that, it will still fall flat. The key to good sound effects is really to get a, a really strong union between the on-screen action and the sound that comes out of the speakers. It can be tough to get right because, you know, it's one of those things that isn't really always picked up on straight away. But uh, no, I, I do like a game with good sound design. Music is a great way to set an emotional tone as well, and uh, for a narrative-based moment, a nice piece of orchestral music can really set the scene. I mean, some of the most memorable moments in gaming are underpinned by, by their soundtrack, like you say. Even simple things like the menu music on Halo, you know, the, the reverberant chanting of some solemn monks. It's, it's powerful in its own way. Anyway, sound good. I actually bought myself a decent sound plinth for my console recording setup. I've already got decent speakers for my PC, but my, my consoles are going through TV sound, which is never good. So I got a compact 2.1 setup with a, a lot more punch. Snuggle Waffle Gaming says, Hey Stu, have you been able to pick up Super Smash Bros. for Wii U? If so, what do you think of it? A fan actually very generously bought me Super Smash Bros. off my Amazon wishlist, so I now do in fact have it in my possession. I've never really been invested in the Smash franchise, but obviously the hype behind that game was impossible to ignore, and it seems like it's certainly one of the biggest games for the Wii U this year, so I'm glad I have it in my collection. I've only had a chance to play for about an hour or so, uh, and this is really the first time that I've ever recreationally played Smash. I think uh, Smash 64 has turned up in a couple of videos prior, but uh, this time though I sat down and I was playing for fun. And it is kind of good fun, I don't really understand it. I get the basics, you're supposed to hit the guys out of the arena, yeah, alright. And if you can do that enough times without, you know, falling or whatever, then, then you win! Anyway, you know, it's, it's fast paced action, 60 frames a second, which is nice. I can definitely see the appeal. Anyway, um, pr I'll probably have it for the bonus footage next week. I need to hone my skills a little bit so you don't mock me too much. John G says, hey Stu, does your wife work? I see this question every week, I guess it's the same guy asking it. And I don't really like answering questions about people other than myself. I don't really like talking about, you know, members of my family or, or my wife or anything like that. But the real reason I haven't answered this question is because the answer is very boring. Does my wife work? Yes. Roger Toledo says, What's your favourite real-life racetrack? A couple come to mind. Uh, the Nürburgring, for its length. I think my, uh, my overall favourite is probably Laguna Seca, though. It's a pretty good layout, some varied turns, and then, of course, you've got the corkscrew to punctuate every lap. Sean Merrick says, Have you heard of No Man's Sky? And if so, what do you think about it? I have heard of it, and it looks very, very cool. I'm a huge fan of exploration in games, and I'm a huge fan of procedurally generated content, and No Man's Sky kind of ticks both of those boxes. So yes, I am quite excited for that. Um, I think it's coming to the PS4 first, isn't it? Well, that's alright, I've got a PS4. Suits me. So I'll probably get it for that, and I'll probably get it for PC eventually as well. I do wonder if the uh, procedural generation of planets will live up to the hype, though. I think, you know, after a few hours, the novelty might wear off, and, uh, you know, the internal workings might wear a little thin. But all the same, you know, all the same, it might very well have the potential to surprise, to inspire a sense of wonderment, so it could be really good. Super Yankee for Life says, What are the chances that the Scar H makes it into the Iconic Arms series in either Seasons 2 or 3? Uh, well, I can tell you that Season 2 has already decided. It hasn't made the cut. And I can also tell you that whilst I do plan to do some Belgian weapons in Season 3, uh, I think they're probably going to be the FNFAL and the P90. Uh, that's not final, that could change. But I don't think it'll be the Scar. That's not to say that the Scar won't ever be covered though, it might very well happen. Certainly if, you know, there are a few more games released with it in prime placement. I'd probably do the Scar platform in general though, so I'd, I'd roll the Scar L and the Scar H into one episode. Just so I've got more games to draw from. But I mean, certainly, of, of all modern guns, the Scar is probably one of the more iconic. And Nick Stevens says, What's your favourite Grand Theft Auto title? 
I lean towards GTA 3 for the nostalgia plus innovation, and GTA 4 for his storyline I found gritty, gripping, and tragic. Uh, the only objectively correct answer in this question is Vice City. I mean, come on, the soundtrack, the neon lights, the hedonistic lifestyle of the 80s. It was an improvement on GTA 3, but it didn't overextend with all these pointless features like San Andreas did. The map was the perfect size. Yep, Vice City, the perfect GTA. Wilhelm Screamer says, Hello Stu, biggest influence on your views on visual design? Clean geometric stuff. Uh, most of my graphic design probably draws from modernism, futurism. Uh, stuff like the Bauhaus movement and uh, the upswing in the use of stuff like Helvetica in the 70s. I've also found that, you know, simple, clean designs are far less fussy and actually quicker to produce than, than anything more complex. So for my style of video production, which is, it's very much reactionary design, I, I normally have a space to fill with design rather than design defining the space. So I find a utilitarian simple design is quicker to produce and fits the bill pretty well. I also like strong bold colours. There was a fashion a few years ago, certainly in web design, to dilute the purity of a single colour with stuff like gradients and vignettes. And I've got to say, I don't really like that so much. I used to do it on a lot of my earlier videos, uh, the vignettes in particular, but I don't really like them because they, they just add mud to the visual mix. And why would you do that when you could have a pure hot pink expanse? That's what I like. Norman Packernickel says, Hey Stu, what are your thoughts on memes? As long as they're dank memes, I don't care. In before somebody corrects me and tells me it's memes. Claymeister says, Do you think there might be a massive war looming considering all the stuff that's going down? I'm talking about the Ebola outbreak and the recent terrorist attacks, Pakistan school, Australian cafe, French journalists. A massive war? No, I don't think so. We might see some scuffles, certainly with ISIS in the Middle East. I don't think the conflict's quite done yet in Ukraine yet either. So business as usual. I guess, you know, with the rise of, of the internet and social media, stuff like this that happens in far-flung corners of the world is, is a lot more visible on Western media. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, or if it's just another way to induce panic via the media. But then, I'm getting a little bit conspiracy now there, aren't I? Nabajam Sana's server says, Are you going to make more Beverage Guide Express? Drinks Ahoy will return. Uh, I don't know what with, and I don't know when, but I do plan on doing at least one video this year, maybe even a couple. It's kind of a sideline, a hobby, you know, really? So uh, I'm not too bothered about that channel. But anything I do in the future will probably be similar to the Guinness video that I did. You know, short 45 minute vignettes about a particular aspect of, of brewing, distillation or other drinks craft. I mean, probably, unless I forget to do a video this year. We'll see. Grey Wolf Leader TW says, So, biscuits in Britain are like Pop-Tarts here in America. A breakfast food we are very attached to since we grew up on them. Um, no. Well, for a start, biscuits aren't a breakfast food here. They're an anytime snack. And Pop-Tarts, you know, Pop-Tarts are just a single brand. Biscuits. Biscuits are an entire world. Model Omega says, Disregarding expenditure, what is your absolute favourite breakfast dish? I absolutely adore Eggs Benedict made with salmon. Actually, do you know what? Eggs Benedict might be my favourite breakfast as well. Although, hold the salmon. Keep it traditional, you know? I like the standard Eggs Benedict. Toasted English muffin, a poached egg, bacon, oh, and that hollandaise sauce. It is a bit of a pain to put together, which is why I don't often do it myself, but it is a very good way to start a day. Lewis Bowden says, Hi Stu, what were your favourite games on the Amiga? There were quite a few that were my favourites. I was a big fan of the uh, the god game genre, so Populous 2 was my jam. A-Train, which is a Japanese train simulator. Oh, and Theme Park was... Uh, I had a lot of fun with Theme Park. I often think I should do a short series on some of the more obscure Amiga games that I really enjoyed. Uh, for instance, games like Z-Wolf which is a three-dimensional helicopter action game, which was great fun. Wizkid, which was the sequel to Whizball by Sensible Software. Which Wizkid was brilliant. Wizkid is just a, such a fantastic game, and nobody today has ever heard of it. So I might have to rectify that. 
My favourite shoot 'em up on the Amiga, probably Uridium 2. I really enjoyed that game, just everything about it. The aesthetic was perfect. You fly a little ship called the Manta, and you have to uh, take on a large carrier by shooting all of its stuff, and then landing on it and penetrating its core. And then it explodes in a cataclysm whilst you warp away. Remarkably satisfying, cracking game. Hired guns as well, that was a cracking game. And Beneath a Steel Sky, oh, I did like my adventure games. Obviously I was a big fan of the Secret of Monkey Island games, but yeah, plenty of others. What's the other one? Uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of it, with Joe King as the protagonist. Flight of the Amazon Queen. Anyway, probably one of my favourite chapters in my gaming history was the Amiga. It was a, it was a nice system, it was just a shame it had to die. Bonavici says, Oi Stu, I'll get straight to the question. What are the worst controls you've ever had the misfortune, or fortune, who knows, to experience in video games? Bad controls, eh? Uh, well, the first games that come to mind are those games which deliberately have bad controls. So, Quop is kind of one of the key instalments there, in which you have to control a runner with Q, W, O and P assigning to each of your limbs. Uh, terribly unintuitive running controls, it was almost impossible to make any progress at all. But, well, you know, with enough practice, some people were able to do it. So the challenge of Quop lay within its own controls, which is an interesting mechanic. It seems counter to good game design, but, you know, it was a novelty. And it's one that has spawned uh, a few other similar games. Like recently, Surgeon Simulator comes to mind. The controls aren't necessarily bad, but they are deliberately obtuse. Other games like Octodad and the more recent I Am Bread. These are all games in which bad controls are kind of a mechanic, which is strange. Now, of course, the worst sort of bad controls are the ones that are unintentional. And this, I mean, this does happen quite often. I find it really difficult to go back and play old games, especially uh, old 3D games. I cannot stand the original Tomb Raider, for instance. I mean, I played those games back in the day, and I never really liked them. I have to be honest, I don't think the Tomb Raider series is very good. I say that with the exception of the most recent one, which I actually did quite enjoy. Uh, I mean, you know, the controls were pretty good, and it took more cues from Uncharted than any of the earlier Tomb Raider games. And so for that reason, the 2013 reboot of Tomb Raider is far and away my favourite Tomb Raider game but only by virtue of the fact that I really can't stand any of the others. You see, what you have with Tomb Raider is a very early 3D platformer, basically. That's kind of what it is. And you've got pretty clumsy controls and very, very finicky inputs. And I, I never liked it, the jumping. You know, it's so frustrating, especially for a game that is largely based around navigating a level. Compare and contrast with Mario 64, which to this day is a joy to play. Mario 64 set the standard for a 3D platformer on a single analog stick, and it did it really well. Anyway, other games, bad controls. I really want to play the early Metal Gear games, but I just can't jive with, with tank-style controls, and oh, it's all very clumsy. I think you can criticise modern games in a lot of ways, but control schemes are not one of them. Shay Samuel says, Hello Stu, as a new subscriber, I don't know if you've talked about this before, but what do you think about the Mass Effect trilogy if you've played it? Was the trilogy a keeper, or did you only play the first and move on to other games? I have played the trilogy in its entirety a couple of times, I think. And I do thoroughly love the Mass Effect games. There's just something very solid and believable about its world. And I think, you know, it does have flaws. Certainly the ending of 3 was, well... I mean, it didn't really spoil the series for me, it just wasn't a particularly good ending. I miss the maker, I miss the exploration of the first one. I liked going down to planets and just, just roaming for a little while and acquiring resources. And I, I would like a new Mass Effect game to expand on that. I do think, however, the character development scene in Mass Effect 2 was definitely an improvement. And there were some really nice character moments in 2 and 3. I mean, more than Solus, fantastic characters, you know. He's a likeable guy, and that's sometimes really hard to do. Oh, and the multiplayer in 3. Big fan of the multiplayer. And I do hope the fourth instalment of Mass Effect does something with that. And I'm sure they will, because they know how successful it was. So yes, Mass Effect, me likey. Anyway, I am just about approaching the 20 minute mark, so I shall wrap it up here. 
I have plenty to do. I'm in the edit phases of my next video, which is fairly major production. It's a successor to the Akimbo Origins video, and uh, it's about, I think it's about 14 minutes long, something like that, anyway, so it's pretty substantial. It's kind of a new format, or an evolved format, so I don't know how well it's going to go down, but I did take the time to, to hone the script. I did actually do a, a revision or two, so it should be, it should be okay. I always get nervous before, you know, putting out a new type of video, but it almost always works out in the end. So that should be done within a few days, in theory. Uh, it's just the editing left now, really. Although I do need to do graphics as well, and I wouldn't mind writing some music. So, you know, you can see how all this stuff adds up. Anyway, no matter, it's coming. I'm hoping to have it done by this weekend, but, you know, it's done when it's done. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, Oh well.